Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Quantum Leap Futures Morning Leap Session for Wednesday, October the 25th, 2017. My name is Doug McKay. I'm the founder of Quantum Leap Futures. Each morning we get together in these live go-to sessions to take a look at the market macro to micro, take a look at the structure of the market, and then we drill down to our trade levels, our targets, and then we build our trade plans. Our trade plans are scenarios or hypotheses, whatever you want to call them, based on what the auction should do based on early reaction uh, by the participants. We do not know what the market's going to do. Therefore, we create multiple plans based on different scenarios or hypotheses and then wait to see what the market is doing, then execute the plan that best suits what the market is showing us. This is a subscription room. If you're interested in checking it out, send me an email at quantumleapfutures at gmail.com. There's no website. There's no blog. It's not a commercial venture. We do everything live here in the go-to, and we do live trading and analysis during the course of the uh, RTH trading session. Please read through the disclaimer. Nobody at Quantum Leap is a certified trading advisor. We are retail traders operating within the self-organized learning environment. Past performance is not indicative of future results in any trades that you see in Quantum Leap. R for education purposes only. Please trade your own due diligence, your own trade plan, and your own risk metrics. All right, so let's take a look at yesterday. Yesterday, we uh, had multiple hypotheses that all centered around one thing, coming in and uh, trading between the 73 and the uh, 63 area and filling in this low volume zone. It's not a node. Because it's not just a single price uh, price point, but a large area of low volume that uh, we did not auction off the day before. And of course, we opened the auction. They pushed up, took out the overnight high by one tick. Then they came back down. Um, this was the best trade of the day for me. Uh, I shorted the 67 and a quarters and wrote it down, and then I covered the last one at uh, 63.50. What I didn't think about is I should have been looking for responsive buyers. It's so hard to flip, you know, as you're just getting out of a trade to flip completely opposite. So I didn't take this move, but, you know, a, a trade off of the uh, naked VPOC from the prior day was definitely a valid uh, trade. And, you know, you could have rode that all the way up to the high of the day and took the full range uh, if, you know, if you were patient. Um, news came out uh, about the flak uh, resignation, and this is what this caused, this move right here with him saying some disgusting things about Trump and the fact that he was not going to run again as a Senate uh, next year. I don't know why he did it today, uh, or yesterday, I should say, when his term is up until... Uh, 2019, but apparently he felt you needed to speak out. Um, the uh, market was pretty balanced. We got a little bit of a double distribution day with a LVN. You know, there's that 66 area again. We were using 66 uh, and a quarter as our key line in the sand yesterday. It's, uh, it's you know, got the LVN there as well. We take a look at the uh, overnight session. Overnight session is pretty much 100% uh, net short. Um, you know, we did not make it back up to the 6750. Uh, this is something to pay attention to. I'm not saying that uh, it's, you know, it's going to drive everything you do today, but the fact that we could not come back up into balance and uh, we tested below the prior day range, and we actually got down and filled the, uh, we, we touched the gap uh, down here at the 6050, uh, but we did not do it in the Globex, I mean, in the RTH. So this gap still remains open uh, with the center of the gap being 6375. Um, and, uh, you know, we had close, uh, we had uh, a low of 6150. Uh, uh, in the RTH, but we went lower in the uh, Globex session. So we are seeing some downward selling pressure and value coming down, but I'm not convinced yet because remember, we still have an unequalized all-time high above us, and we now have some repair work to do uh, above us. But let's just take a step back. Let's take a look at the news. 
Of course, today uh, we had uh, uh, core durable goods came out at 0 0.7 versus 0 0.5. Dur durable goods order came out at 2.2 .2 versus 1.0. And goods ordered non-defense came out at 1.3 versus 0 0.5. The, uh, we do have a uh, house price index in nine minutes. Uh, but the big one today, of course, is going to be new home sales and the Bank of Canada interest rate. This will be an uh, interesting scenario today to see if Canada raises their interest rate um, in front of the, uh, of the U.S. Uh, Fed meeting that's coming up. Uh, but new home sales is probably going to be the driving force with a combination of the interest rate. 1030, we've got uh, accrued uh, inventories. Um, and then at uh, 11.15, we've got uh, Bank of Canada, uh, Pelo speaking, that's like our Fed, and uh, five-year note at uh, 1 o'clock, and then that's, that's about it for the day. Whoops. I forgot to open this. Let me just open it up. I just want to take a quick look at the earnings. Earnings continue to come out, uh, you know, pretty darn good uh, all the way around. You can see this morning, let's just sort by uh, sales. Uh, Walgreens beat, Boyne's a beat, Anthem, Coke, uh, Glasgow, uh, Sprint, General Dynamics. I mean, you know, for the most part, you know, earnings are pretty darn good. Uh, coming up after the market today, uh, let's go to pop popularity to sort that one out. So we've got Visa coming out. Uh, oh, it's already out, sorry. Uh, so we've got Las Vegas Sands, Ultra Clean Holdings, Amgen, um, a couple bear gold uh, could move gold a bit. Nutrisystem. So uh, the big one will be LVS tonight, I guess. I'm not seeing anything that's uh, a, a real market driver. Take a uh, step back. Let's take a look at the macro to micro. I always start my day doing this. I use a simple candlestick chart with a 9 EMA, 20 SMA. And then I use my toss uh, paper money tools to uh, look for patterns and uh, and candlesticks, etc. Uh, we've been in this upward sloping uh, fork for quite a while. Uh, we're in the upper uh, channel. We don't even get to the top of that until we get into the, the mid 2600s. Uh, this is our 12th month of one time framing up on the monthly. Uh, got good slope, good separation, prices paralleling the nine quite nicely. Trend is very much intact. On the weekly, uh, same thing. We got uh, a move to new all-time highs that we put in the Globex at 77 and a quarter. Our RTH all-time high is 76.75. We missed this by a couple ticks. Um, we are coming back down into uh, testing the mid of the uh, prior week but overall the trend is intact we don't even challenge it until we get into the 25 28 so this gives us a large area of chop that really you know uh doesn't really mean much in the overall big picture we do have last week's low we are one time framing up okay for the last five weeks uh, I would be paying attention to last week's low here at the 42.50. Two reasons. One, it'll defeat the uh, or violate the uh, one time framing up, but also our key line in the sand, our like big key line in the sand, is down there at the uh, 43. And a, a move down below last week's low will uh, will put us below that as well. Going to the daily, you know, we've had uh, a uh, a large bearish day. They took it back, uh, but were fa failed to get the continuation. And now we're coming down. And uh, on the daily, we tested 
with the low at the 6050. We tested the uh, the 9 EMA, uh, and we're starting to lose a little bit of slope and separation. Now they can bounce off of this, and they can actually push through and come down and challenge the uh, the uh, 20 SMA. And there's some targets down here, specifically the microcomposite VPOC of the balance that we broke out of. Remember that that microcomposite VPOC is down at 49 or 48.75. So a move down here to test the 20 isn't necessarily a real bearish thing. It's more of a pullback, pick up the late buyer. So just don't get your, again, until we get below that 43, don't get your uh, your super short hat on uh, because this market is still in a range. This has been an abnormal parabolic move that just continues to grind up slowly with very little pullback. Normal auction would have us pulling back and it would uh, it would not uh, you know take away from the trend that we've got going right now. Just you know I'm not biased either way right now because I am seeing some weakness. But I just don't want the super shorts uh, to get hurt. Uh, you know, with the fact that we get, you know, we show a little bit of weakness, and all of a sudden the the top is in and the sky is falling. Um, we uh, are below the nine and the twenty on the uh, on the four hours, so we are seeing that selling pressure as I was uh, I was talking about. But it's not real serious. Going to the one hour, you can see that. Uh, you know, a, you know, a slow grind down right now. We did just go close this naked uh, uh, naked cross here on this move up. Remember, we still have these naked crosses up above at the 74 area and the 72. So, you know, we still have unequalized high. Uh, it is a weak high as well. And we've got some naked crosses above. So we have repair work to do uh, above uh, you know, so a pullback is is actually natural and uh, and healthy for this market. Um, but as it stands right now, we've got slope and separation to the downside on the one hour, and the trend is down. As we move down to the 30 minute, uh, you can see we're now starting to get into a consolidation uh, in in this area at the 63 area, going to the 50 minute. <clears throat> same picture um, you know there's almost a bit of a uh, inverted head and shoulder but it's pretty sloppy so I'm not going to really pay much attention to it and then the five minute we're trying to uh, get back uh, above the nine and the 20 right now but basically we're in this <coughs> consolidation uh, zone almost got a little bit of a uh, inverted cup and handle let's just see if it's uh, where it gets violated so that we know what to look for. So if we get above the, call it 6450, uh, this will inv violate the inverted cup and handle. Um, it's just uh, it's just a little one. I mean, even if I draw it right now and look at what the uh, what the target would be, it's not going to be very much. Probably only down in that 6050 area. Uh, not even um, 60. Sick call it 62 or 6175. Uh, so it's not a real big one. And look, it just got. It's just getting violated up here anyway. So let me just get out of this. So overall, the trend is up, but we're seeing some weakness in the Globex. That's what we take away from that. Taking a look at the structure of the market. Now, the other thing that's important is that two-day value, if I take this uh, composite, the two-day value they're trying to hold was up here at 73. Now we bring in uh, yesterday's, and you can see we've got a clear microcomposite three-day VPOC at the uh, 2568. So 2568 is actually going to become our over-underline. 
um, because if we get back above it, we're accepting the value at 68. If we can't hold that value at 68, they've got to come down and uh, and pick up the late buyers. And that big target is still down here at the 59 and a quarter. And remember, we still have that gap to close as well. Uh, some areas to pay attention to, 62, obviously, uh, which is that uh, weak low down there at uh, 62, even though we've broken it in the uh, Globex. Um, and then uh, the 68, of course, and then above that, the 71 uh, area. Um, anything below 62, target that 59 and a quarter with possible move down to test uh, you know, what's going to be our temporary key line in the sand, which is going to be this 5575. That is the uh, value area high of this micro composite balance area that we were talking about that we broke out of. And that VPOC is down here at 4875. Um, I don't even need this on here anymore, so I can get rid of that. Um, and you get to 53 just to this is a bit of a double distribution here and the smaller time frame value increase from 48.75 up to 53. And then they broke out, accepted the 59 and a quarter, then gapped up again. Simple auction logic. OK, so let's take our Globex. Our uh, Globex has got, uh, you know, some decent balance around the 6350. Our high is 67, which is basically a couple ticks below our uh, naked VPOC. It's right at our close. Uh, our close yesterday was 67. Um, our overnight low is 6050. So one tick below that uh, gap close. And then our overnight VPOC could shift up to 64 and a quarter, but right now it's 63.50. So one tick above the RTH. And there's really not much uh, to go on or to give us clues other than that. Uh, just a, a lot of choppiness and uh, and you know trying to hold value around the 63. Uh, from overnight. So in terms of, so we don't need this. So let's get rid of that. Let's expand this out. Start putting in our levels. Uh, this is a very valid uh, value area. So I'm going to be watching that 65 as, uh, as a clue up into the value area high. And you can see that the value area high is that uh, three-day microcomposite at 68. This becomes our over underline. I am anticipating that we are going to test up into the value area. It's whether or not we travel through the value and break above it. That's going to be uh, the clue to the day on whether or not whether or not uh, send it to the back. Um, uh, whether or not we get continuation. Then we've got the the 71, I'm not going to use the 70 and a quarter. I'm going to use the 71. Our 20 period full session average true range is running at uh, 1069. So off of the low overnight of 6050. Our upside daily ATR target is 71 and a quarter. And then off of the high overnight of 67, our downside daily ATR target is moving up to 56 and a quarter. Or moving down, I should say. And again, uh, the uh, the value area 
high from the microcomposite that we drew broke out of is our temporary key line in the sand. Uh, our key support level is is still going to be down in that 43. It's actually looking like it shifted down uh, slightly to 38.50. I'm still going to use the 43 because because uh, uh, that gives me a, a better idea. We did go down and put another uh, lower uh, low on the week. So our 20 period daily ATR on the weekly is running at uh, 34, not daily, weekly 20 period ATR is running at 34,735. So off of the 60.50. Our upside uh, weekly ATR target shifts down slightly to 95 and a quarter. So we still have capability within the range of the week to go up and uh, and test uh, and make new all-time highs. Our daily, our weekly downside ATR is down here at that 42.75. I just got to verify that for a second. 77 and a quarter. Forty-two fifty. Okay, uh, and then nothing really changes below us. All the levels, everything else uh, stays the same. All everything above us uh, remains the same. Remember that uh, we are in a bearish week. Uh, we are below the seventy-two seventy-five. I'm not really looking at weekly critical mass yet. I'll start looking at it tomorrow. Uh, with two day, two sessions less, we're trading right now uh, near the uh, the lows. Now this is kind of tricky because of the fact of where we are, um, we're showing some weakness, and our inventory overnight is 100% uh, net short. So we could see some rebalancing. So unfortunately, because of where we are because of the weird auction that we're in right now, my hypo one and hypo two are gonna have equal opportunity. Uh, but because of the weakness, I'm putting a little bit of edge onto uh, more downside price discovery. So I'm looking at a open auction just inside of range, okay, outside of value. I'm looking for responsive buyers to step in, okay, try to rebalance the, uh, the overnight session come up into the value area and somewhere within the value area finding initiative sellers and then rotating us back down okay taking out the uh, 63 uh, close shopping at this low and then pushing down and coming down into our next big target of 59 basing and then start working our way back up okay back into uh, into uh, the prior day and closing somewhere inside of yesterday. That is hypo one. Hypo two is a open auction just out of range, uh, a move down into the 59 area, possibly even coming down into the 55 to 53 area and then basing and working your way up and closing somewhere uh, around the 59 to 60 area. That is hypo two. Hypo three is a failure day, a uh, open auction. Uh, and remember, we do have major news coming out at 10 o'clock. So this could turn into a trend day. So hypo three and hypo four are both trend scenarios. And uh, the first one being an open auction, uh, just inside a range or just outside a range, a push up, a chop between here and the 65, and then failure coming down into the 59, chopping around the 59, not picking the buyers up, pushing down through and coming down into the uh, balance and right back down into the microcomposite and basing down here and going sideways and coming back and just uh, you know probably chopping between the 53 and the uh, and the 49 that is hypo 3 hypo 4 is a open auction just in range or just out of range 
failure to take out the overnight low, a push up into the uh, 67 area, chop around here, hold and accept 68 and push up and come up into uh, the 76, uh, uh, 77 area and coming back up to get into a positive week and, uh, and a takeout of the unequalized uh, all-time high and put in a new all-time high in the RTH. So those are, and then the fifth alternative is the news doesn't do much and we spend a day fighting the low end of the range and chopping between 59 and 67 uh, area and just basically having another day in balance here uh, and you know uh, solidifying the microcomposite VPOC somewhere in around the 68. So those are my main uh, hypotheses on ES going over to gold. Gold uh, is uh, not holding the 7560. We had put in a double bottom at the 72, I think it was 72.3, and we took that out uh, just after the news. Uh, we're currently uh, rotated that we have a, uh, a low at 72 now. Um, so the key is, can they get back up and hold the 75, uh, you know, eight area? If they can come up and accept this value again, I'm looking for a, a slow walk up today towards that 79, 80 area, maybe back into the 83. But if we don't get above the 75 and the 72 is challenged, anything below the 72, you want to short, okay, into the 66 to 63 area. It's actually going to be a pretty good trade uh, if it sets up. And I don't think the 63 is going to hold this time. I think it's actually going to push through and we'll get a, uh, a new fractal low. And remember, the next big target above is 47. We are uh, getting a little bit of push up here on gold. So we're now above, what is it? Oh, we just had that news, didn't we? Let's just take a quick look at that. So uh, home price index came out slightly better than expected. Uh, gold, for some reason, just took a blast off and we just, went right through that 75.8 and we are coming up into well here's <laughs> there you go here's here's what I'm here's one of my hypotheses playing out in about 30 seconds um, so now we're above the 75.8 uh, the key level to watch right now is this 80.30 uh, anything above 80.30 look for them to come back up into this balance here at the, uh, the 83 and then start chopping there and uh, looking for continuation. My overall, I mean, I am talking about weakness in gold uh, simply because we were below the uh, the composite VPOC. This composite VPOC goes all the way back to October the 24th, 2008. So it is a major, major magnet, and uh, we were showing some weakness below it. Um, you know, doesn't mean just because we popped up above it now that we can't you know, come back down again, but watch that 72. Anything below 72, I'm targeting the 66 and 63 area uh, with possibly even continuation down. It'd be nothing for us to come down. My overall, you know, long-term goal uh, on gold is a major move back up into 1300s and, and higher. So anyway, that's going to complete our pre-market session. Somehow I'm going to have to find a way to uh, to make these things shorter. They're way too long, and uh, uh, nobody's paying much attention to them other than our group. As always, trade well, trade safe, and we will catch you on the flip side.